Hello everybody, the topic of this video is wind energy, specifically how a wind turbine turns its energy of motion into power that can be used to do work. And given some technical specifications of a wind turbine, we can figure out how much power we'll be able to generate from it. Also just a quick reminder, it's a common misconception, but a wind turbine and a windmill are not actually the same thing. Um, so a windmill would be a mill, so we're not actually milling anything when, when we're doing um, wind power, we are generating electricity. So a wind turbine is not a windmill. Um, all right, so how does a wind turbine work anyway? The simple explanation is that wind moves across what's called a swept area, which is this circular plane created by the, the turbine blades. Your, the wind goes perpendicular to it, and then the blades are at a tilt, so they are able to capture the force of the wind and then spin the axis, which turns some gears, which turns the generator and makes electricity. So that is the super quick version of that explanation. If you want to find out more, there's tons of resources online. So the point of this particular video is actually to explain where the wind power equation comes from, how we calculate this power um, from some turbine, what factors do we consider, uh, what features of the turbine uh, can we alter to generate more or less. Um, essentially, the wind power equation is a variant on the more general equation for kinetic energy. This is something that you may have seen in an intro to physics class at one point. Uh, so what is kinetic energy? That would be represented by this equation here, uh, which is one-half times mass times velocity squared. This means that the energy of an object measured in a unit called a joule, which is similar to a food calorie, has to do with its mass and how fast it's moving. So the standard units that are used in this equation are energy measured in joules, uh, mass is measured in kilograms, and then V stands for velocity in meters per second. So what is the wind power equation then? It's basically this monstrosity right here. So I promise it's almost the same thing as the little one we just looked at, minus one tiny but significant difference that I'll mention at the end. Um, just to orient you, here's where all of the variables um, come from, what all of these different symbols refer to. So P is power generated and it's in the unit watts. Uh, v is velocity of the wind in meters per second and then the equation requires that you cube that. Rho, which is a Greek symbol right here, stands for the density of the wind in kilograms per cubic meters. So it's an um, amount of air in a specific three-dimensional space. And then pi r squared, which is the uh, wind, uh, the swept area. So that is the the circular plane, the imaginary circle that the wind crosses. Um, and so pi r squared is the uh, area of a circle equation that we all learned in geometry class in high school, hopefully, where uh, r is the blade length in meters. And then you have these four measurements here, which are more or less just efficiency measurements. Since no process is 100% efficient, there's always going to be some heat loss uh, in, the, um, in the different components. So from the wind to the electrical power plant, there's some losses. All right, so how do these two equations relate, which is the main point of this whole thing? So let's see. I'm not going to nitpick the details just yet, so first I only want to break up the equations each into manageable chunks so you can visualize how they come together. So we'll get the obvious out of the way. One half is in each of them. Then we have uh, a unit representing velocity. Then we have a unit for mass. So mass is the least obvious here. So if you're talking about the mass of, say, like a billiard ball, you could weigh it and then you would know what m is. But for air you can't weigh it, um, at least not the way you weigh a billiard ball. Um, you have to figure out the mass of the air a different way. So we do that by multiplying the density by the swept area. So rho times pi r squared. And then last but not least you have these efficiency measurements that I mentioned in the previous slide. 
Okay. So why? Why do, why do we multiply all these things together? What does it even mean? Um, so I'm going to explain that a little bit more. And the way we do that is by going to the fundamentals. So with all of these different energy concepts out there, a lot of unit names keep coming up that sound suspiciously like the names of dead guys. So you've got your Pascal, your Watt, Coulomb, Hertz, Ohm, Joule, Newton, Volt. Um, so these are called derived units and they're named after their discoverers. So they're actually simpler ways of stating concepts like energy, charge, power, resistance, etc. without having to say their names out loud. Um, for example, when you're buying a light bulb and you want it to be 25 watts, you'd much rather say 25 watts to the Home Depot employee than, let's see, watt would be 25 kilogram meters squared over seconds cubed. So I guarantee you'll get some funny looks and you probably won't get your light bulb. Um, so anytime that you want to understand what's going on in an equation, it's a good idea to look at the units before involving any numbers at all. So if your units are wrong, your numbers most certainly will be wrong too. All right, so we're going to look at this now. We'll break these equations up into their most fundamental units. So I mentioned that these equations were not actually identical since one deals with energy, which is this one, and then one deals with power. So let's see. Energy is measured in joules. Power is measured in watts. Uh, joules is really kilogram per meter squared over second squared, and wind power is kilogram meter squared over seconds cubed. And mass is really kilograms, and then your density is kilograms over cubic meters times pi times the radius, so the blade length, meter squared. And that's going to give you your, your density times uh, area. And then we're going to look at the velocity, which is actually meters per second, and then it'll look even prettier if we do it like this. It means exactly the same thing as this, it's just two different ways to write it. It'll make the canceling look nicer at the end. So now we've expanded everything out, you may notice a major difference. So power has seconds cubed at the bottom, and we'll go to this slide. Power has seconds cubed at the bottom, and then energy has seconds squared at the bottom. So why would that be? Well, basically power is defined as energy over time. You may have a certain amount of energy, so here's an example, stored in your body from like the pizza and the soda that you had last night, and then when you get up and you go for a 10 minute bike ride, uh, the amount of energy applied over 10 minutes is the power you generated. So when you put energy over power, um, when you put energy over time, sorry, it means that you add another seconds variable on the bottom. So that's why you have that there. So we're going to look at these equations again really quick, do some canceling, make sure the units work out, and then we'll be done. So we'll get the efficiency numbers out of the way because they're not really involved in this part. Um, all right, let's break this down. So you have your mass of something. In the case of wind power, it's the mass of the air. So it's all three of these equaling the mass of the air. Then you've got your velocity of something, which in this case is going to be the velocity of the air. And then you have your differences. So you've got your squared up here and your cubed here. Since we need to divide um, energy by time, it requires that we add another seconds down there. And it's convenient too because if you add, if you cube both, then you actually can get rid of this meters cubed on the bottom. And what that will look like is crossing those off so both are satisfied. We have your kilogram times meter squared divided by second squared, same as this. Kilogram meter squared divided by seconds cubed, same as this. And everyone's happy. And thank you for watching, and I hope that was informative. Have a good one.